Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome back to my channel. Back with a video on communication system, software-defined radio, GNU radio. I am so excited about this video. Why? Because I found an easiest way to generate single sideband using Hilbert transform. That's the best uh, way to explain this video. I'm so excited about this video. So we're going to look at how I can generate single sideband. Uh, single sideband either upper sideband do I want to keep only upper sideband or do I want to keep lower sideband and we're going to learn how to modulate the signal using good radio and we're going to also verify some of our concept and we're going to also demodulate the signal using only simple blocks that are available in GNU radio as you already know uh, anytime you're doing modulation basically you're multiplying it the key element that we have learned uh, using textbook when we are generating single sideband is actually something called Hilbert transform and this is what a Hilbert transform does uh, so this is probably the basic diagram that you guys have probably seen and that we normally see in our textbook that you have something called a Hilbert transform what is that Hilbert transform does so what we have learned is Hilbert transform just provide a 90 degree phase shift and this is exactly how it's implemented in GNU radio uh, it just performed 90 degree phase shift. That's it. And this is what we generally see that it performed 90 degree phase shift using Hilbert, Hilbert transform. In any of these textbooks that you will pick up, you will find a uh, picture that looks something like this. So that's the, that's the tool. We're going to use Hilbert transform, Hilbert to the rescue to generate single sideband. Now, now, this is what's going on. You have your modulating signal, which is 10 kilohertz. Why 10 kilohertz? Because generally modulating frequencies are much lower as compared to your carrier signal. Hilbert transform has an input of a float value. That's why uh, you have to have a signal that is real numbers that is going into a Hilbert transform and you have complex numbers which are coming out. All right. Um, now, this is your modulating signal at 10 kilohertz. All the, all the parameters are same, cosine 10K, amplitude and the stuff you have your signal source that is 500 kilohertz that is your complex source and you also have a cosine signal and in any modulation process whenever you were doing modulation think of it like as multiplication so we're multiplying your Hilbert transformed signal to your carrier signal which is 500 kilohertz now since everything was in complex I'm using a block called complex to real and it's going into a throttle block and then you have a modulated output. This is how simple that SSB modulation is taking place. That's all it is. Now, I'm going to explain something. Uh, we're going to look at the output of this, and then we're going to introduce a block called complex conjugate. This is an important block, uh, and we're going to see what's the difference between just using a simple Hilbert transform and complex conjugate. So what are some of the parameters that are there? So number of taps. Um, the higher the number of taps are going to be, the crispier the response, the crispier the phase shift, the crispier the modulated output is going to be. And we're going to observe this in a little bit. Um, and then just use a Kaiser window. Why am I using a Kaiser window? Because that's what it says to use. I mean, you can try it with another win window if you want, but this is what it is. This is the value for your Kaiser window. So that's the default. Uh, everything is exactly the same. So let's, and then you have your modulated output right here. Then of course, when you want to demodulate your signal, what do you do? You take your modulated signal, which is coming out from the tr throttle block. You multiply that by a carrier signal, which is 500 kilohertz. And when you multiply it, it definitely needs to go into a low pass filter because my modulating frequency is much lower, which is what, 10 kilohertz. So that's why I've chosen my LPF to be a cutoff frequency of 15 kilohertz. So anything above than that, please don't pass it having a transition by width of 100, uh, 1000, and again, everything remains the same. Then it's going into a DC block, DC blocker. This DC blocker is not doing anything except if there is some type of a DC component, please remove it. That's what it, th this is what it's doing, actually. So basically, sort of performing like a filtering process. And then you have your demodulated output, which is coming out from that block. So let's observe this, let's run this, and look at the intricacies of this block, output of this block, uh, of this entire flow graph. And now, when you look at it, all right, so this is your modulated output. Let me just simply zoom in on it. Don't worry about this negative frequency. These negative frequencies are just there. And there's no such thing as negative frequency, but due to Euler's process, 
they will just come in and you can always i don't want to because i'm not using an individual time sync uh, because I'm just using a GUI sync, which comprises of all the constellation blocks and things like that. Uh, but if you were using frequency sync, I can just choose half of the spectrum so I don't get to see this. So this is basically what we are interested in. So let's zoom in on it. Now when I zoom in on it, what do I see the modulated output to be? It's 510 kilohertz, guys. Why? Because you have a modulating frequency of 10 kilohertz, and then you have a carrier signal of 500 kilohertz. So 500 plus 10 is 510 kilohertz. So we're we're doing SSB, and but we are only interested in upper side at band of an SSB by looking at my modulated output. I hope you're getting it. What is it that we're looking at? Only we're getting about 510 kilohertz. So this is we're only looking at single side band, but only the upper side band. Good. Now let's look at the same thing. You can look at the waterfall graph if you want. Uh, you can look at the time domain graph. This is what a time domain graph looks like. And you have a constellation display like this. Having a QT GUI sync that you're seeing right now, uh, it will actually comprise of frequency, waterfall, time domain, constellation, everything together. So you don't have to have in individual instrumentation like frequency separately, frequency sync, time sync, and things like that. Now let's check out the demodulated output. This is what a demodulated output. Don't worry about this negative part, guys. Do not worry about this negative part. We are only interested in this. This comes into play when you have when you're working with Euler's identity. But if I had a time uh, frequency sync, I can just choose half a spectrum. Look at my output. It's 10 kilohertz, isn't it? 10 kilohertz because I have a filter that is 10 kilohertz. A filter that has a cutoff frequency of 15 kilohertz, and we are only interested to see frequencies that are up to 15 kilohertz anything above than that we don't care but i have a signal that is lying at 10 kilohertz regardless of if i choose upper sideband lower sideband it doesn't matter because in modulation process the information lies where in the sidebands so now the thing that you have to notice is this so this is the modulated uh, modulated output at 510 kilohertz. Now here here's what happens when I play around with this complex conjugate. What this complex conjugate block does is this. It's simple. I, I can explain this, but this is what it does. If you have an input that is A plus BI, it will just change its sign. That's all it does, which means you're changing the sign. By changing the sign, this is very important in our flow graph. I can choose either if I want to keep upper sideband and lower sideband. So now when I ran this simulation, you were only seeing what? Upper sideband of single sideband. Because if you were to look at it, this is 510 kilohertz. All right. Now when I enable my complex conjugate, let me enable this and let me delete this. This is what you would expect to see. Now look at my modulated output. And let's see where it lies. It's at 490 kilohertz. Why? Because 500k minus 10k. So it's 490 kilohertz. So this is why that complex conjugate block is very important. You can choose do you want to keep an upper sideband or do you want to keep a lower sideband. That's all it does. Now, one more thing. Uh, what's up? What's up with this number of tabs? All right. So I have chosen these number of tabs 200k. Um, let me just play this. And you can see the crisp, crispiness of your output modulated signal. It's quite crisp, uh, as you can clearly see this. And now, let me run this again because I didn't have my. Uh... So you can you can clearly see your modulated output. Now, when you play with your tabs, let me change this tab to, let's say about hundred. And let's look at the output. Now you start seeing other stuff as well. You see something at 510 kilohertz. Then you will see something at 490 kilohertz. So it's not actually performing the, the performance thing quite nicely. So you got to have higher number of taps. Of course, that requires higher number of calculation and things like that. But it will do the job. That's the reason I have chosen this taps to be 100K. And you can see the output quite crisp. So. I hope you like this small tutorial on uh, single sideband. This is probably the easiest tutorial I made when it comes to single sideband because I had made like several tutorials on SSB. 
but this is probably the easiest and probably easiest way to understand this. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching, guys.